Hear the words of the Lord we are reading from the Gospel of John, chapter 20. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, they have taken the Lord out of the tomb and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciples set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together and the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came following him and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying in the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who reached the tomb first also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture, that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and she saw two angels in white, sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, they have taken away my Lord, and I don't know where they've laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there. But she didn't know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary, she turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabbanai which means teacher. Jesus said to her, do not hold on to me because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them he had said these things to her. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of God's word. I'd like to use for this Easter Sunday a sermonic theme of looking for Jesus. Looking for Jesus. My grandmother was a singer. In church, if my grandmother sang, you could best believe we were going to be stirred or somebody was going to shout or the majority of the church would be up on their feet clapping in a frenzy of happiness. When my grandmother sang, I believe the world shifted. She just wasn't a good singer, but she had spirit and all of her life was up in the songs that she sang, and you could feel it. But it wasn't just in the church, it wasn't just in public places, it wasn't just where a lot of folks were gathered. She sang all through her day. If she were putting clothes on the clothing line, she would be singing. If she were taking clothes off the clothes line, she would be singing. If she was feeding the chicken, she would be singing. If she was collecting eggs from the chicken coop, she was singing. If she was cooking, she was singing. All through her life, it was accompanied by singing. And I would find that her singing would find its way even into her cooking, her parties, her care. 
She was something until she wasn't. This past week, we have been looking back. We've been looking from passion to palms, from the royal entry to the arrest, from the party to the lament, from the good time to the duck, duck, goose. You're it, Jesus. We've been looking back from the table to the kiss, from the communion to the cross, from the before COVID-19 to we're right in the middle of a pandemic time. We've been looking backward from the living of life to the being in the middle of storm. We find ourselves this week looking back, retracing our steps as we try to understand it better by and by, looking back over details, trying to make sense of even how we got here, looking back from let the good times roll to the words of Marvin Gaye, what's going on times. It's good to look back. It's good to remember grandmas. It's good to look backwards. In West Africa, there is a clan called the Akan people. And the Akan people have come up with a whole system of what are called Adinkra symbols. One of those symbols is a picture of a Sankofa bird who is looking back. The bird's body is faced north, but his head sits on its shoulders looking south. But why would a bird be looking backwards, you might wonder. How can one drive forward when one is looking in the rear view mirror? The Akan people believe the bird is looking back in order to move forward. Sankofa means it's not taboo to fetch what is at risk of getting left behind. Marion Wright Edelman quoted in her spirit when she declared that no child shall be left behind. Looking back to say we are doing something fundamentally wrong in these United States of America that is leading to leaving marginalized poor kids behind. Let's look back and fetch what we have left behind that we might move forward. The Khan people believe that there must be learning and new movement as time passes. As this forward march proceeds, the knowledge of the past must never be forgotten. I'm going to repeat that. The knowledge of the past, the wisdom, the lessons learned must never be forgotten. The Hasidic Jews took it a little far, but they got the message. We must never forget, looking backwards, that we might move forwards. And it is in the looking back, I remember my grandmother and the song she sang, the songs that kept coming that got on my last nerve when I was a child, which is why we practice spiritual discipline anyhow, because one day we will look back and retrieve off of years of living in shelves something we needed. I remember my grandmother singing, count your blessings, name them one by one, and a friend stopped me and says, I don't participate in such shenanigans. I think that's really cheesy. Say more, my friend. Well, most people that count their blessings are a little short on blessings in the first place, my friend declares. And so I thought about this. I thought about the people that are counting their blessings, and I get a point. My friend has a point. Generally, the people that count their blessings, maybe it appears to the eye or the surface, don't have a whole lot of blessings. You see, folks that are at the cash register that are holding up the line, you know when you're standing in line and there's that person at the cash register counting out their pennies. They're usually a little short on blessings. But it doesn't stop them from counting their pennies anyway because pennies add up. They might add up a little bit slower than dollar bills, but they eventually add up. And so we may be these days a little short on blessings. But I say count them anyway. And while you're looking backwards, go on a search of sorts to be cognizant of your blessings. In my down-home country church, someone would say, well, I got up this morning, and that's a blessing. Well, I'm clothed in my right mind, and that's a blessing. Well, someone is gone and I'm still here, and that's a blessing. And after a while, we begin to count up the pennies, and the folks with the least amount start to feel rich. You find loose change here and there, and you start to feel real good about the ways in which you're blessed right now. 
If you are watching me on your device, that's a blessing. If you're listening to me on your device, that's a blessing. And at some point in the worship experience, someone would say, I'm not what I want to be, but thank God I'm not where I used to be. You see, when I look back over my life, when I look back and remember, when I remember the songs my grandmother taught me, I'm able to move forward. It's good to look back, but it's also good to look forward. And this is where we enter the biblical text today. Mary got up early on a Sunday morning looking forward to making her way to the tomb. In the first seven days after a death, one was to mourn for the deceased. If one was not at home, one could be found at the tomb. Mary wasn't at home, but Mary was making her way to the tomb. In the immediate aftermath of the death of Jesus, Mary did what many of us do. She drew close to the deceased. Many with the loss of loved ones try to have a beautiful funeral. We try to have a home-going service. We try to knock the ball out of the park and put the person away nicely. We drift around in shock. We dance between they were just here and now they're gone. I, I just remember talking to them the other day and now they're gone. We pick out the right outfit. We look at them. Some even with a little bit of drama 301 try to get in the casket. And Mary pretty much was trying to draw close to Jesus, fussing over Jesus, wanting to get to the body so she could be there. I guess others thought Jesus was dead and he wasn't going anywhere. But Mary was looking forward, even if the future was right in front of her nose. She was looking forward to finish the lingering in the presence of Jesus and she gets to the tomb and he's not even there. Some of you were looking forward to birthdays that were not celebrated. Some of you were looking forward to trips that had to get canceled. Some of you have had funerals and no one came. Some of you have had to bury loved ones without space to grieve. Some of you were looking forward to graduation ceremonies that had to get squashed. Some of you were looking forward to celebrating milestones that had to be put on hold. Some of you were looking forward to weddings that are either not happening or the party size got drastically reduced. Simple everyday tasks that we totally take for granted. Some of you were looking forward to going to your aerobic class, the morning stop at the coffee shop, a visit with a friend. And some of us were even looking forward to this day to come to church on Easter and to celebrate the risen Lord singing and hugging one another and passing the peace. Simple things. And now life has been suspended in midair as we fight to get the last roll of toilet tissue. Life has been put on pause as we try to get as many people as possible to stay your blessed assurance at home. Shelves are empty showing our true color of fear. It almost seems too much to bear. It's almost surreal as we are confronted with a new normal that ain't normal. She was looking for Jesus. Instead, there was an empty tomb. She got turned around. She got turned on her heels. And she began to ponder, what could this possibly mean? And she was concerned and worried. What are they not telling us? What? do we not know about COVID-19? Why are there so many deaths? They took my Jesus, and I don't know where they put him, is what fell off her lips as she ran back to tell the disciples. This week I've been looking myself. I'm in a perpetual, I am in a perpetual state of looking for this thing or that. I'm always looking for something. This week, I have a three-story home, tri-level they call it. I sat down after traveling from the top floor to the bottom floor, back up to the first floor, and just when I sit down, you know that feeling, and you kind of get relaxed, and you're ready to read what's before you, and you remember you left your reading glasses on one of the other floors. 
And you realize if you want to see what's in front of you, you're going to have to get back up and go looking. I was listening to an organizer, and the golden rule according to this organizer is everything has a place. Well, that sounded like good news to me. I thought if everything in my house could find its place, I'd be okay. So I started walking around and I ended up at my son's room. And I say to my son what the mantra says to me, everything on this floor has got a place. There's a place it should be, son. And so I try to order my life, but I still find myself, even when I put everything in its place, I find myself still missing and looking for this or that. I find myself confused, bedazzled, thrown off a bit as I look for this thing or that thing. Even though I think I put it in this place when I need it, it seems like it decides to move someplace else. But this week I'm talking about something a little bit deeper when I talk about looking. I'm talking about something deeper when I talk about searching. I'm talking about looking for Jesus. I can relate to Mary looking for something and being unable to find it. But today, again, I'm talking about something deeper. And then I hear my grandmother looking back to go forward. I hear my grandmother singing in a beautiful pitch, ask the Savior to help you. Comfort, strengthen, and keep you. He is willing to help you. He will carry you through. And when I hear her sing, I feel like everything is going to be okay. Ask the Savior to help you, child. Comfort, strengthen, and keep you. He is willing to carry you through. I mean, he is willing to help you. He will carry you through. And I know in that moment of looking backward that I have enough for today. It's important to look forward even when we find empty tombs. It's important to look forward even when the news is not good. It's important to look forward even when we discover the droplets can linger in the air. It's important to look forward even when we are in a city of dry bones. It's important to look forward even when the numbers keep climbing upward with the promise that we will level off this weekend. It's okay to look back, but it's important to look forward. My grandmother sang her way through it. You might have to count your blessings through it, but it's important to look forward. You might have to fetch something off of a shelf from your past to get through it, but it's important to look forward. You might have to pray yourself through it. You might have to read your way through it. You might have to lay prostate before the Lord through it. You might have to do a project after project in your house through it. You might have to Netflix your way through it. You might have to TikTok your way through it. You might have to DJ your way through it. You might have to meditate your way through it, but let's do it and let's get through it. It's important to look forward. The beauty of this story is that Mary looked forward. The beauty of this story is that after looking forward, she finds Jesus. But she doesn't just find any old Jesus, she finds Jesus alive. She gets in the middle of the storm and she doesn't give up. She continues to look forward. They've misplaced my Jesus. I don't know where they put him, but I'm going to keep looking till I find him. She looks for Jesus even when the tomb is empty. She might cry, but she keeps it moving. Jesus is alive. He's alive. He went to the cross. And on the third day, he got up. Our Lord and Savior is living. And because he lives, we can face tomorrow. Your expectations may not be all that high this day, but Jesus is alive. Mary kept looking, and so can you. And we can get through this. Not only was Jesus lifted up, but Mary got lifted up. Not only was Mary get lifted up, but Peter got lifted up. Not only did Peter get lifted up, but the other disciple got lifted up. Not only did the other disciple get lifted up, but the doubting Thomas got lifted up. And because they got lifted up and Jesus got lifted up, we are lifted up.
Today, by proxy, we are lifted up. Jesus is alive. I'm going to tell y'all, keep on keeping on. Mary went looking for a dead Jesus. And after much looking and fretting and worrying and stirring and running and about to lose her mind, she found a living Jesus. A living Jesus. He lives. He lives. Christ Jesus lives today. Amen.